Today for our little systems programming endeavor, we're going to learn about how to replicate who. Who is a Unix command that shows you who's logged into a system. I've logged into my FreeBSD virtual instance from two terminals, uh, two terminal windows. And uh, if I run who, it's going to show that there are two of me logged in on various uh, PTYs, TTYs, I'm sorry, uh, pseudo terminals. So on pseudo terminal one, I, or the first one, I'm sorry, I logged in at 940, and on the second one, I logged in at 1002 from my um, host of the virtual machine. <coughs> so that's all it does. It just shows who's logged in. Now, if they're logged in on the uh, the main the console of the virtual machine. Let's put that up and I'll log in and show you what that looks like too. This is like a, the video console of the machine. So I'm gonna log in. Ah, heck, I'll log in as root. All right, and we type who. It shows that I'm logged in and we, it shows the same thing for me. Um, shows that WSEN's logged in on the two pseudo terminals, meaning that Basically, the, they come in through the pseudo terminal through SSH or telnet or something like that. And then root is logged in on an actual TTY, which is the root console of the machine. Now, there are other TTYs, I think, if I were able to control Alt, F1, F2, F3, F4, whatever. There's several terminals set up, but this is the main console. All right, And it doesn't show that I came from anywhere. So that's the command we want to replicate. And if I do dash H, then we get a header all right, that tells us that this is the username, this is the line they're logged in on, this is when they logged in, and this is where they're coming from. And if they're on the local machine, there is no from. That's all we want to replicate. So that's, that's what we're going to come up with a plan. So without looking into it much more than that, let's take a look at the man page for who. Man uses a pager called less. And less shows us 24 lines of whatever it is. In this case, it's a man page. And gives us some navigation capabilities. To know what those capabilities are, I can press H at the colon prompt. And it'll show me what, the, what commands do what. And there's tons of them. You can search within uh, the man page, that kind of thing. When you're done looking at the help file, hit Q. And you can hit Q again to get out of who. But we're kind of going to tool around it here for a minute. Um, one of the things I showed you was the dash H argument, which writes column headings. But let's, let's look at this real quick. So who is a command? It's in section one of the manual, which is general commands. They are the, all the commands that are kind of there, ls, cp, that kind of stuff. And then the man page shows you the name of the command, which is who, and what does it do? It displays who is on the system, simple. Gives you a synopsis, which is sort of usage of the command. You can just type who. We did that. You can type with a dash and some parameter, which we use dash h to show the headers. You can also type who am I or who and some file name. Um, the who utilities and then blah, blah, so on and so forth. Um, we scroll down a bit. We get more information about the command after it tells us about the arguments. Okay. Um, by default, who gathers information from the file, var, run, utx, active. So that's a database of log entries. And it contains a record of every login, logout, crash, shutdown, and date change since it was tr truncated or created. And then there's a little bit about the environment and different. there's our file again, that's gonna be important. And then exit status, the who utility exits zero on success and greater than uh, zero if an error occurs. The next part we're interested in is the C also. We notice that there are three other commands in the general commands, because they're all section ones, um, that are similar or, or variants of, and then are related to, I mean, C also could be pretty much anything, but um, that there's a section three, which is library commands version um, entry here called get utx entry, int, which my mind tells me this is how we might get a utx entry from our UTX active file, but that's without any context. I just figured that out. You know, kind of, it made sense to me. Um, 
not totally true because I've already investigated, but it should ring a bell that it's saying git and utx and end. Okay, and we're talking about a utx file. So there we go. So that's a little bit about man, a little bit about who. I think we can get started with a plan. So without looking any further at the moment, let's think about it. So we know what it is. It's the who command. What is it? How does it work? Well, we're not entirely sure, but it accesses that active file. Um, how can we replicate it with what little we know already? And so one other thing we'll show, I'll show is file slash var slash run slash utx active. That's the file that is tracking all our entries. So let's take a look at it. It's a data file. Okay, so we can't cat it, or can we? Uh, sometimes this will screw up your terminal window, um, in which case you have to re-log in, but it's not the end of the world. But if I cat it, we see it's some gobbledygook binary file, fine, but it also shows us that's a, t that's a terminal, there's a user, there's another terminal, there's an IP address, there's a terminal, there's a user, there's a, you know, and so on and so forth. And we even see the root TTYV0. So sure enough, it looks like it contains data about the logins and other stuff that we can't really understand because it's binary. Logically, and the way it used to work is that if you knew the structure of the entries of this file, you could read the size of that structure and read it into a structure and then access the fields of the structure. That was the way it was used in the past. Uh, at some point, say FreeBSD 6, they decided to do away with that. Uh, maybe it was 7 or something. But um, And so now you, you're required to use an API. The API itself, though, uses a struct, but that struct is not documented. So it's, I think it's called FUTX or something like that. But if you dig through the source, you can find the definition of that structure. And then you could do the same sort of deal. You could instantiate an instance of the struct, read that num that size of information out of this file, and then do that over and over, and you could get the same effect. We're not going to do that, because that's not the intent of the API. Um, the API is provided for us. It's recommended that we use it. We're going to use it. Um, and that API is that git utx int thing that we saw in the man page, this guy right here. So we'll take a look real quick at that before we go back to our plan. ETX int, right? And this is what we asked for, and it's what we got, and it's in section three of the manual, which is library functions. Okay, these are these come with the system, and they they provide us with this in UTX int, get UTX, get UTX, all these different functions that are available, set UTX int, uh, set UTX DB, that one's interesting. And then it tells us that these are all user accounting database functions, that we have to include this header file, that these are the declarations of those functions. Well, we we should find these in this file if we go look at it. And we may do that later. And then it tells us a little bit about the functions operate on the user accounting database. Uh, this is the log of active user sessions, so this is what we're interested in. Uh, some alternative stuff. And then each of these, each entry in these databases is defined by the structure utempx found in this file, which is the file that we are currently looking at. Uh, sorry about the scroll thing. It's this file here is the one we're looking at um, the uh, man page for. So that's good. Uh, but it tells us about that structure, which is it has the type of the entry, the time of the entry, the users, uh, sorry, the record identifier, which we don't need, process identifier, we also don't need, but user, line, and host, we'll use those things. And then it tells us all about that stuff. So we'll come back to this. So we can come up with a plan now. How can we replicate this function with what little we know? Well, here's a plan for you. We can get an entry out of var run active, okay, which is a utemp struct. We can check and see if it's actually a login entry. If it is, we can print the user, the line, the win, and the host, which I guess is actually from. There we go. And maybe from. So maybe this is all we want to print. And we just do that in a loop until we've read all the entries in the UTX active file. That's our plan. 
uh, to get there, the things that we need to know are the things between us and success here is we don't know how to open the accounting database yet. We don't know how to get an entry. We don't know how to differentiate between different types. And we don't know how to print stuff. All right, so I'm going to create two working windows. One for us to look at C stuff as we create this uh, code and one where we can look at the man pages. And I'll have them in separate tabs. Ooh, I already have two windows, so why not do that? Um, probably I'll take, um, take that out and we'll have two separate windows instead of two tabs. But it's the same basic idea. So over here we're going to do man, who, for now. We'll leave it there. That's good enough. And I know I have to be cognizant of my little picture down here, so I'll try to keep track of that. Over on this window, let's clear the screen, um, I'll create a directory to work in. We'll call it who. Directory who, cd who. Nothing in there. All right, I'm going to make a make file first because I was doing it. Makes things way easier. So I'm going to create a thing called who, and it's dependent on who.c. The way I'm going to create the file is I could just cc who.c, and that would create a binary, but it, the binary would be named a.out. That's not helpful, so I'm going to tell it I want to create uh, who as being what I create. The binary that gets generated is going to be named who with no extension. And it's dependent on who.c. In addition, to save myself some grief, I'm going to add in uh, dash w all. That's going to turn on all the warnings. That way, no matter how slappy I get, it'll at least give me some hint that I've done something wrong and uh, help me out. So that's, that's that line. And then I'll always want to have a clean target as well that rms who. So it gets rid of the binary that I generate. And I'll save this file. And I like to kind of have a little bit of test-driven development style of, of programming here. Uh, so far, I have a make file. Let's make it. All right. It tells us, hey, I don't know how to make this who.c. Well, that's good because there is no who.c. So next up, let's create a who.c. Or even better yet, let's keep testing the make file. So I'm going to say make uh, who. It's going to say I don't know how to do who.c. Same error because okay, that's the default target. But what about make clean? Will that work? The answer is no, because there's no, there's no who file. All right, fine. Next up, let's create the who.c file. And we'll start with a basic template for all C files. Include standard io.h, int main, int argc, char star star argv, or if you like it the other way, char star argv, brackety thing. Either way, it's the same stuff. And then we'll return zero. I could return one, but there's no point in that. All right, so this is a basic C file that does nothing. Let's see if it'll work. So we'll make it no complaints. Do we have a who file? Yes, we do. Does it do nothing? Yes. Does it return zero? Yes, it does. All right, nifty. We've, uh, we've got a basic thing. So back to the plan. What does the plan say? The plan says that we need to get an entry from var run active. So we've got the who command up. Uh, let's just go to the bottom. All right, um, and we kind of already glommed that we need this, but there's our file. How do we how do we find this? Well, one way might be let's try it out. I don't know that it'll work, but let's do it anyway. Man dash k, utx active. How about let's put quotes made. Okay, not what I meant to do. All right, no, it doesn't know about it. How about utx? Just like that, try that. Yeah, okay. So here's here's get UTX entry. Eventually that comes up. It's an accounting database function. We know we need to access the accounting database. Let's not pretend like we don't know what it is now. So man, get UTX entry. Okay, which looks like this. It uses, well, first 
we know that we're going to need this uh, include file. So let's go ahead and start editing this thing again. We're going to put it in there. There we go. Now, now it should know about it. Fine. And we're going to do this get entry thing. The get entry, the get utx entry thing is a void function. So we just call get utx entry with a couple of parens and it'll return an entry. But what does that, how do, what does that mean? Do we have to open the file first? Well, it says that these functions operate on this thing, blah, 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 blah. There's more about UTX active. And then each entry looking like that. Yeah, that's nice. And then all about the fields, yay. And then we get down here to this, the get UTX entry function can be used to read the next entry. So in a good test driven way, let's just try to use it. Okay, and see what breaks, if anything breaks. So we're gonna use a while loop because we're gonna do it until it doesn't return anything because it says it doesn't return anything. It reads the next entry. So what happens when it gets to the end? We don't know, but well, we'll try it anyway. So um, get utx int, uh, and we'll have a little rigidity thing and we'll say that. How about that? We'll try that, let's see what happens. Sure enough, it worked. And does it break? No. All right. Well, that's fascinating. Good to know. But we gotta. We probably ought to save those things that we're reading. So we'll create a struct. Utemp x. Utemp x. We'll call it entry. That's a location. Let's make sure. Oh, yeah, it's gonna return a pointer. So we will. Call it a pointer. And then down here, we'll just modify this a little bit. Say in, insert entry equals get int. Let's see, does that work? Seems reasonable, why not? Let's see if it works. Okay, we get some warnings. Um, one thing I'd say is that if you expect warnings and they look like the warnings you expect and you're good to go, you can ignore them if you choose. But when you first approach this, kind of figure out what it's trying to tell you. So it says using the result of an assignment as a condition without parentheses. And it's a warning and it's fair. It's saying that I may not have intended to uh, compare this assignment. But in fact, I might, and I do in this case, but I'm going to fix it just to make it um, better. But it's telling me two ways to fix it, or two kind of ways. It's saying you can place parentheses around the assignment. So I can put paren around this and this and it'll go away. Okay, or I can use equal equal to turn it into equality if that's what I meant. But it's not what I meant. I'm, I don't, entry's not uh, initialized. I'm trying to initialize it. That's the whole point. So uh, I won't belabor this too much in the, in the future, but what they're saying is I can fix it one, one way. Uh, and I can put these parens around it. And that'll silence the warning, it says. And sure enough, it did. Okay, but a better way if you're going to do that, I mean, because how does that do anything other than turn the warning off? Uh, I can actually do a comparison. I can say, well, it's not null. Okay, in the hopes that that's what my, compar that's what my comparison intends to do. It's while I'm getting entries, while this pointer is valid, I want to continue my loop. So let's just make sure that works. Okay, that's good. And we can test it just to make sure nothing breaks at one time. Okay, uh, back to this. So the theory being that I have non-null uh, entries that are of type u temp x. All right, so the next thing I said was, is it a login? How can I tell if it's a, a login? Because right now I've got an entry from this file and it's a utem struct, seems good to go. Let's check and see if it's a login. So I go back to the man page and I scroll up and I realize that we're talking about this thing called type, ut type. So I gotta keep that in mind. It's a short, just interesting if I wanted to store it. I need to store it in an appropriate type, but it says the UT type field indicates the type of the log entry. 
but you can have one of the following values. Empty, no valid user accounting information. That's not helpful. Boot time, when the system booted. Shutdown type, old time, new time, and then some stuff that looks more promising. User process, which identifies a process. Init process, identifies a process spawned by init. And login, identifies the session leader of a logged in user. Now that is a little, that sounds right, login process. And then, but I don't know what a leader is. And then it says dead process, session leader has exited. But then I read this, I say entries of type init process and login process are not processed. So it can't be one of these two. All right, and these don't make any sense. So I'm going with user process is the one I'm looking for. Because dead process, that wouldn't help. So by elimination, if nothing else, I can do this. I could also write a little loop that echoes these and then well, anyway, we could figure it out. It would just take a lot longer. But this, this is the one that looks prom most promising. So in theory, all I need to do in my code is compare it. Say if entry, that's the pointer thing that I got. So entry, ut, uh, whatever it was, I can't remember now, but we can look at it. Ut underscore type. equal equal, and then what was it? Uh, user process. Wow, user process. All right, uh, except for really what I wanna do is I wanna say not equal. And if it's not equal to one of those things, then I just wanna continue my looping to get the next entry. But if it is, then I wanna display another good test-driven type uh, idiom here. I want to display the entry, and I want to pass it entry, entry, I spelled it right the first time. All right, so let's just see if we can make that work. Sure enough, we get some warnings. Okay, it says implicit declaration of function display entry, that's expected, and then the linker can't find it either. Okay, so those are, we got expected errors, let's fix them. All right, what it's saying is, is that we don't have something called display entry. So let's create a function called display entry. That takes a struct. Well, actually, I guess we could probably declare it counts, but let's just start with struct. Struct utemp x pointer entry. I can name it whatever I wanted to, but entry makes sense in both contexts. All right, so I've declared a, fun, uh, a function called display entry. Let's see what happens when we try to compile it. All right, uh, no, no uh, compile time warnings, but we did get a linker error, meaning that there is no, there's no content for that function that we declared. So we have to define it, which totally expected, All right? Um, we'll copy that into the buffer with a YY, and we'll put it down here, and. Start typing away. All right, so we want to display the, the struct now. So we're going to start off with printf, and we'll just say percent %s for string and comma, and then uh, what the heck. It's uh, entry, arrow, and then we have to figure out what the field is we're interested in. Uh, user, user login name, ut underscore user. UT underscore user, because we're going to print the user, the line, the when, and the from. Okay, fine. UT user, print F, quote, percent, S, quote, comma, entry, arrow, UT underscore line, print F, quote, percent S, or percent D in this case, we'll just do that. Entry arrow ut underscore td dot ut. Yeah, we got to learn a little bit more about that. We don't know how to do that. So uh, let's just start with that much stuff. See what happens. All right, that's some stuff. We're going to print some stuff. Let's see what happens. No complaints. Let's run it. Okay, well, it did something. Kind of ugly, but uh, looks like I didn't have any spaces between the fields and I didn't have any character turns between the entries. 
So we'll fix that real quick and then we'll learn some more stuff. So let's just print F quote, space quote between them and then at the end we'll print, oops, we'll print a character trait at the end after we're done with all the printing the entry. All right, we make it, no complaints. Let's uh, run it, see what it does. Okay, that's got the usernames and the terminals are on. That's progress, significant progress. Um, but we don't know about this time thing, so let's figure out what the heck the time is doing. All right, so there is a field called a struct time val UTTV, the time the entry was made. And that's interesting, but we don't know what a time val is. So let's try to figure it out. In time val. There's no telling why it's not findable this way. I'm sure some expert would tell us how uh, using the man pages is kind of old school. I, I don't really care, but it's there anyway. So we're going to do time val again, but we're going to search for it using keyword. And it's going to give us a whole huge long list. This is a little weird, um, but the way you read these is you try to find the one that is in the section you're interested in. All right, so we're interested in either section two or three functions, which would be system calls and library functions. This thing in section nine, I don't even remember what system section nine is, but um, that's a different thing uh, that we're not interested in. So what you get is some long list that eventually ends in one that's got the section number in it. So all of these functions, time read, clear, compare, so on and so forth, um, are all operations on time valves, okay? So we can do man, any one of these, and get the right man page. Um, and this is something horrible with capitals, but we can ignore that. We just look for the ones we're interested in. So this one looks like the one we're looking for. So I'm gonna just pick the easiest one to type, which is time read, man, time read. The fact that it's first is, um, arbitrary, but anyway, there's time read, which is in the library functions, which is good. We can use those. Uh, we need to include sys time eight, so I'm going to copy that in my buffer. And then there's a bunch of timer functions which we don't really care about because we don't we don't know what operation we need to do, but we do need more about the structs. So here's the description: um, struct time val. That's the one that is in the man page we just read, and it tells us that there's two longs. Seconds since the epoch, which was January 1st, 1970, and microseconds, uh, I guess, since then as well, which would be kind of weird, but we're going to go with that. So there's our, there's our struct that we need to know about. We don't care about the rest of this file, and it's good enough for us to go. So back to the prior man page. We see that struct time val. Is defined in that file, so let's go add it in. Um, that's going to be our time header. So now we can use things like the time val. All right. So the entry print f will print a space between this uh, the line and the time as well. But now I'm going to call display time, and I'm going to send it uh, entry arrow. UT line, oh, I'm sorry, UTTV. Is that right? UTTV? Yeah, UTTV, which is a struct time val, but we're going to dereference its uh, field, which was main, I think, TV underscore sec. But we can find out. TV underscore sec. That's the one we want. Okay, good. So we're going to pass the second since the epoch to our display time function. Let's see if it'll work. Nope, because we don't have a display time function yet, and therefore the blinker fails. So good to go. Uh, we're going to void. Whoops. Uh, insert void display time, and we'll say that it takes a. Uh, what is it? It is a long. Okay, so it takes a long, and we'll just call it time. Let's see what make says. Make says, yeah, okay, fine, but we need to define it. 
All right, so copy the declaration here and put it here. All right, so we need to start converting the long into something more useful. And this is a bit tricky, so bear with me as I figure this out. So we have a long, the number of seconds since the epoch. We want to get to, which is actually part of a time val structure. Uh, yeah, long TV sex, time val. So we could Google, for example. Uh, print time val local time how to print time at a time okay fine it's got some time so time is timer thing time returns some seconds so then it converts that using a local time function into some info and then uses to ref time so these are the two kind of functions that we need to use we need to use something called local time and something called store f time. All right, and it tells us use store f time, which is a way to use a string to format something that's a that's a tm info, uh, which is a struct tm. Uh, fine, which we get back from local time. Yay! Okay, we can look that up. We can do a man and local time. And then it tells us about to include time. We're already including a version of time. Hopefully it'll be good. It tells us there's something called local time that'll return, given a clock, return some time. I already took a note because this is a little challenging. So we're going to scroll down to the note and more of the stuff that we just did. Um, I, wanted to, I originally Googled for time val, print time val, local time, and came up with this other version of the help, which is useful. Um, the actual, uh, could you help me how to format a struct time val instance into something more readable? It says, hey, do this, convert the TV sec, which is the one we're looking at from the thing to using local time, and store f time, then append the microseconds. We don't care about that part. And then we look at it and it says, oh, how do you get the seconds? Well, you do this. And then you say, this is equal to that thing. Well, we're passing that, so we don't need to worry about that. All we need to do is convert it and then use it in the um, store f time. So, without any more of that, we'll just try it out. So, the um, we're passing the seconds in this function to display time. So all we need to really do at this point is say, um, move this over so I can see it. There we go. Uh, insert time t hmm, l time. We'll call it. And then I'll say l time equals local time. Time. That's our second since the epoch, and we'll get an L time, and then we can do our store F time. Now we're gonna have to have a buffer first. All right, so we have to have some buff. So I'm gonna call it buff, and it's gonna be 64 characters is plenty for this. And we'll do the store F time. Uh, buff, and the size of buff. And then our string, which we'll use this uh, this thing here to start with. And then we'll come L time. And then we'll just print it. Print F, quote, percent S, quote, comma, buff. Not terribly elegant, but should work. Let's see how many ways we broke it. 
three warnings, incompatible integer to point of conversion passing along to parameter of type const, so that we need this to be a, a pointer. And then there's more about the pointer stuff, so we'll do one at a time here. It's saying that we need to pass the address of time here. So we'll see the address of, and let's see what happens. Make. All right, we're down to two. Incompatible pointer to integer conversion converting from long. Okay, and integer. Sorry, I made a mistake here. Incompatible pointer to integer conversion assigned to time t. Okay, gotta do it the hard way. Let's just take a look at this again. Time to yeah, forget this. What are we gonna call it? Um, struct, which is what it's trying to tell us. TM pointer L time. That's what the type needs to be. Okay, my bad. So let's look at where we went wrong in figuring this out. It's supposed to be returning a struct TM. Oh, <laughs> it's just maybe a no. All right, back to that. So um, once we did like it told us to and returned L time as a struct TM pointer, which is exactly what it says it's returning here, uh, then we got it to work. So back to work. Um, so make worked. Make clean, make again, just to make sure. Yeah, it worked, and we have a who command. How's it work? Ooh, looks good. All right, so now their from is the only thing left to do, and then we'll have a working version. So we displayed the time, display a space between them, and then the uh, printf quote percent s quote comma entry arrow. UT underscore hosts. Is that what it was called? Uh, get UT accent. It's called UT host, sure enough. All right, so it should work and it should be kind of everything. Right quick. Um, make. Okay. Now we're gonna we're gonna clean up some aesthetics and then we'll be done. But effectively, this is the who command. But what I really wanted to do was I wanted to replicate who dash h. All right, so we're gonna need a header, and then we're gonna need to change up some stuff. So we're gonna need this to be left justified in a field uh, that that long, and then we're gonna need this left justified in a field that long, and we're gonna need to change the format a little bit. And then we're going to need to add prints around the from as long as there is one. Okay, so this is a refinement. Um, we I said originally we were going to replicate who, and the who we're going to replicate is who dash h. So I copied this into my buffer. Let's print it at the header. All right, before we do anything else, we're going to print f quote. And a character turn. All right, so that's good. Let's make it and see what happens. Make that slash who. Yep, that looks good. But now we need to get it to display those things. So to do that, we're going to go into the display function and everything we're going to change is here. So percent, and then to get things to justify, I'll put a dash. 
and then we want a field size. I'm going to say 1717. Or, or even better, since we're printing the spaces, we'll call it 16. 16, and then the next one is going to be, and I already figured it out, so you don't have to, but you can play with it till you get it right. 13.12.12. Uh, and then this host entry. Let's see. I need to do anything with that? No. How about the time? Yeah, we need to do a little bit of change on the time, but we'll come back to that. So let's see how we're doing so far. Make. Okay, this is lined up. This is lined up. This is lined up, but it goes way past because it's the wrong format. And then that, oh, we can add the print. So we can do a couple of things real quick. Um, hit. I don't anticipate breaking anything, but if you did, you could do this one at a time and then uh, figure it out. All right, so if I just put, if I just put parens in here, then if there isn't a host, it'll also put it. So I'm gonna get a little fancy here. I'm gonna say if, and actually I'll do this one at a time. If entry arrow ut underscore host equal equal quote backslash zero. I'm not sure that's going to work, but we'll try it anyway. If it is not equal to, yeah, if it's not equal to. If it's not equal to that, then go ahead and print the. Ooh, no. Nah. Well, I like it better this way, so let's see. X, X, insert, equal, equal. If it is equal to that, then we're going to print it. and then we'll put the prints in there. There's a fancier way of doing this, but this is going to work okay. Else, just print the regular entry. Let's see if it works. Nah, I didn't think so. Okay. I mean, why you got to be that way? Okay, well, it didn't break yet. Let's see if it works. Okay, well, the logic's backwards, but um, it, it, uh, it, it, it's going to work. All right, so back to this guy. All right, fine. Let's see. So if it is equal, if it is null, then you're going to print. Oh, then you don't want to print. That's true. Okay, so we'll leave the logic the same. We'll just put the prints around the other entry. Okay, a quick test. Wow. Okay, dot slash who. There we go. Okay, that looks good, but we're still running over on the time. So let's fix time and then we'll be done with the whole thing. All right, so time has got a problem. Um, we need a different format. So we're going to look at the format here. This is the format we're shooting for. We'll just copy it over here for now. Um, put it right there. Okay, and then we'll also do man aster of time. Yep, got lucky. <laughs> Good. Uh, which, if we scroll down in here, it'll give us all the codes that we need. I'm looking for the month. Um, so we'll just look for month and see what we can find. All right, present the full month name. We don't want that the abbreviated month name. The percent B is the one we want. So we want percent B and then the day and then the hour and the seconds. Uh, sorry, the hour and the minutes. Okay, so. I found all these windows. There's the one I'm looking for. Okay, so back to this guy. We know that we need uh, percent B. And then we need a, sp uh, yeah, now we need a space. And then percent D the percent D for the days and then percent hours colon percent minutes and we can see that to the right I didn't just figure it out um, and that's it okay so percent D B will get us the SEP 
Space percent D will get us the 18. Space percent H gets us the 9. And percent M. Okay, seems like it'll work. Let's try it out. All right, who dash H? Let's see if they look the same. They look the same. Mission accomplished. So that's kind of it. And our code is pretty straightforward. Cat who dot C. Um, basically, we've got the only the includes we need. We need standard I/O for most things. Uh, Print F, I guess, would be the one here. But uh, utempx.h for our entries and time.h for our time conversion. We wrote two kind of functions to help clean our code up so we could just see what's logically happening here. Um, we have one pointer. Uh, we're not allocating the memory, so nothing to clean up there. We're printing the header. We're, for each entry we're assigning, we are looking to see if it's a user process. If it isn't, we just bounce to the next one, but when we get one that is, we're gonna display it and then we're going to return, if there's no errors, we're going to return zero. Otherwise, we'll maybe something else will return a signal or something. Um, but display entry just puts things how we like them, the user, the line, the time, and the host. And then we have display time to convert from that crazy second since the epic thing to something readable in our current time zone. That's it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks. Bye.